Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, her parents thought she had an imaginary friend. The neighbor thought she was talking to the woman who died in the house. So who exactly was it? Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. And it is 855-853-4802, our phone number to share your real ghost stories with us. We'd love to hear them. You can call that in 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and, of course, write in on realghoststoriesonline.com. Tony and Carol with you on today's episode of the program. We got a long caller here, so let's just jump right on into that. Hi. Hi, my name is Brooke. I wanted to tell you all about the house I grew up in and even the impact it still has on my life today. Um, years later, and I have a husband, a child now. Um, when I was two years old, my parents had just gotten married. They had only been married for maybe five years, and they moved from Michigan to Houston, Texas. Um, hey, y'all. And they bought a house in this neighborhood where they had nice houses all around them, good schools, you know, there was a uh, golf course right down the street. I mean, it was just beautiful to begin with. And all the houses were way out of their price range. You know, they were first time parents and first house. And my dad was a handyman and, you know, he wanted to take on a project and they just fell in love with this one house. And my dad said that when he walked in there the first time that he thought it needed a lot of work um, but he felt like it could be a family home and he could make it instead. And the man that they bought it from had told them that his wife had died there and they had lived there for over 30 years and that they loved that house. And his wife said that it was her favorite place to be. And he had let the house fall into disarray and didn't take care of it because of uh, his age. His wife had died a couple of years before that and it just kind of fell apart, but he didn't want to leave because he loved it so much. And I think he felt connected to his wife. And anyways, my parents said that when they moved in, my dad was remodeling and I was like two years old. And he said that he would put me in this one room, which was later on my bedroom. And he would put me in front of the mirror and there was like all these toys. And he said that I would put all my toys in front of it and play with myself and just have fun, you know, like most two year olds talking to myself. And he said that he would come in there and I would always be pointing to the mirror and acting like I was talking to somebody. And he said he didn't really think anything of it. My parents aren't super religious and they weren't really back then. And my dad said like over the course of like two or three years, like when I was about five years old, he said I started to tell him that I had a friend in the mirror. Um, I don't remember this now being an adult. My dad said he came in there one day and he asked me who I was playing with. And I told him I was playing with the woman in the mirror. And my dad asked me, oh, you know, joking around, thinking I'm just a five-year-old imaginary friend. He asked me what this woman's name was. And I said her name was Luby. And my dad didn't really think anything of it. He started to go around the neighborhood more. and He started meeting more neighbors. And, you know, I, I had a little brother then also. And he said that he befriended this woman down the street and my mom also. And that she had told them about the women that had passed away in the house and how after she died the house kind of scared them and they would try to come over to check on the guy that lived there her husband and they had a really sad story uh, apparently they were married they had three kids and the one son was mentally ill and went camping with some friends and a drunk driver plowed over their tent and it killed him instantly and apparently he was into rodeo he was into animals he was into you know, all kinds of, just, I mean, Texas, you know, he was one of those people. Then uh, their other daughter, she died during childbirth, and their grandchild died also. So it was just, this whole family just had this sad, I don't know, like, when I hear of it, I think of, like, just this sad vibe. And whenever my parents moved um, into this house, like, over the course of several years, it just started to escalate as we got older. And my little brother never really had anything happen to him. Um, my parents said it was mainly me, and they had a couple instances that popped up. I remember when I was a little girl, and I would be 
laying in my room and sometimes I would feel like when the covers were up over me, I would feel like somebody was sitting on the bed. The bed would kind of go down a little bit. And I remember there was this huge mirror and I had these beautiful old dressers. My mom said that I would start crying and they wouldn't understand why I was crying. And apparently I would see this woman in the mirror. And as I got older, I do remember this because I would leave there and I would see reflection out of the corner of my eye, like of the hallway. And I would always feel like somebody was walking through it. And it was really weird and it used to really creep me out. And I remember having to go to the bathroom and looking down the hallway and I would see like a white dress go across the floor. And the thing is, my parents know how kids are, so they didn't really play into it. And they didn't really tell us a lot. And what I found out later on, because I lived in this house until I was like 14 years old, and what I found out later on when I was probably 11 or 12 is that this woman had died and they told me, you know, her name is Lucy. And my dad told me a story I'd never heard. And this is where the neighbor comes into the story. He said that when I was about five, that they had started meeting the neighbors and he said he brought me over to her house and they had, and this woman had been friends with the movie. That was actually the woman's name that lived in the house. Yes. And that is the name that my imaginary friend was. So call it coincidence. I don't know. This woman had been dead before I even lived there. My parents had moved from Michigan. So they didn't know anybody. So there's no way we could have found this out from anybody. And my dad said that he took me there because she had said the woman's name was Ruby and it kind of freaked her out a little bit. And she wanted to see if I could recognize her. This woman took all these pictures and put them on the table and told me to pick out who I, who I thought Ruby was. And she said uh, that all the pictures I pointed to were of Ruby. And there was pictures of everybody in there that I had no idea who they were. Like just random people from her family, like from church, you know, whatever. And I picked out the pictures of Ruby. So my parents said that whenever that happened, it kind of confirmed for them that this was real and this was happening. And my mom said it kind of concerned her and scared her. Throughout my whole life, from where I'd moved from place to place, I feel like this woman has made an attachment with me because I found out less than a year ago from my dad um, that she had actually died in my room, not the room that I thought she had died in. So all those times where I felt like she was sitting on my bed and the couch, or the, not the couch, but the bed was sinking in, in my head I, I really think that happened. I don't think my parents played into it and I remember the dreams I would have. It'd be like I was walking down the hallway and it's always like the house was empty and it used to scare me. And I remember I had a hall, like the, the closet in my room, I would leave open, cracked with the light on because it would scare me in the dark. I would get scared because sometimes I would see stuff and I would just close my eyes and just act like I didn't see anything. And it seemed to stop usually when I got scared. And I remember watching the string in the closet rock back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And there was no airflow. There was you know, I mean, I was a kid, but now when I think of it, there was nothing in there that could have caused that, like nothing at all. And I can only believe that that's what happened. And I feel like even now that I have an attachment, because no matter where I've lived, where I've moved, I've always had weird things happen. My mom thinks that they're attracted to me. Um, I personally think that it's her. I'm not sure at this point in my life, and I guess I'll continue to see what happens. But I'm um, sorry, I don't mean to take up all y'all's time. Um, I love y'all so, but this is definitely my most, this is where it started as far as like paranormal activities and encounters and, you know, yes, I did see what I saw and yes, I did see her walk down the hallway and I saw things move, we had things go missing in the house, but yet they would appear later on. And the thing is that my little brother and me, stuff would happen where it was too tall for us to put something, like stuff like that where nobody had been in there where you could just tell that something something was up. And my dad and my mom never fed into it because they didn't want to scare us because, mind you, this was our childhood home. They wanted us to have a happy childhood. And it was nothing but that. We, it, it was horrible with what happened in the house. And there was abuse from the family member. Um, and it goes on and on. And I feel like this place has so much negative energy in it. And since my parents had sold that house, we moved out when I was like 13. Like they've had like six owners and I've looked up just occasionally, probably a couple of times a year, I'll Google it just to see if it's on the market and it's always on the market. So it's just kind of weird. Um, thank you for your time. Bye. Thank you for sharing that story with us. What's your thoughts on all of that? You know, 
If, if I was a parent, and I'm not, but if I was, and <laughs> yes. my kid was playing, had an imaginary friend, and then I found out what her name was, you know, who are you playing with? And she said that, and that happens to be the woman who died in the house. Mm-hmm. And she was able to pick her, pick her out in photos. That would kind of freak me out. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. And then, you know, having other weird things happen, like somebody sitting on her bed at night. Mm -hmm. It just makes me think that was the woman. Now, she was talking about things, you know, as an adult, you know, and maybe her following her. I don't know. Maybe. But I would think that she would have been very attached to that house. Sure. And I don't know how it works. Maybe you can be in two places at one time when you're a ghost. I mean, are there rules? I don't know. But... I would think she's sensitive and she also could pick up on other things and it could be. Mm -hmm. I think that you and I've had this discussion a lot of times that there are just some people that are more sensitive and no matter where they live, things are going to happen. Yeah. She could be one of those people, but I just, I would find that so creepy as a parent. That sounds like something out of a movie. Yeah, very much. Maybe it will be someday. Who knows? <laughs> thank you for... I can write it. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you for sharing that with us. 855-853-4802, the phone number. If you want to share your real ghost stories with us, if you want access to all of our bonus materials, advanced episodes, all of it's there for you on Apple Podcasts or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to another episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. <laughs>